We're good? Yeah, go 6.30 straight up? Okay, great. All right, good evening. We will call to order the Tuesday, November 9th meeting of the Birmingham Parks and Recreation Board. Roll call. Heather Carmona. Present. Stephen Collins. Present. 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 All right, uh, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of Tuesday, October 5th meeting. Entertain any comments or changes? If not, we'll look for a motion for approval. John? Thank okay, you. Heather Carmona? Yes. Stephen Collins? Yes. Dan Grant? Yes. Bob Kaplan? Yes. Tony Noble? Yes. Adam McLean? John Lucci? Yes. Dan Lutz? Yes. Great. All right, great. Hey, Connie, I just like to mention that Allie just came in from the meeting. Okay, thank you. Hi, Hi Allie. Allie. <laughs> I'm going to orient myself like this. I feel like there's yeah. a whole group of people that we can't talk to. So. Do you want me to angle you? <laughs> okay. I can swivel. Okay. <laughs> All right. So on our agenda items, we have two items uh, requiring action tonight. Uh, the first is, well, the first and only, but two parts, request for two art donation installations. And Brooks is here. Hi, Brooks. To give us a little bit of detail and talk about what's in our packet tonight. Is my audio okay? Yep. 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 Thank you. 
Thank you, Brooks. Any questions or comments from members of the board? Susan. Um, I think we're looking at pickleball over there. That would be the biggest question I have is, will that fit along with the pickleball possibly going over there on Southfield and South Lawn? That's an observation I had too, <laughs> based on <laughs> what's in our packet this evening. Since we were there. Yeah. Can you, did you hear that, Brooks, or Carrie, you want to address that? Yeah. And uh, I spoke with Carrie about this, and uh, our engineering, let me pull the flip chart again. Sorry, you notice Carrie's screen. This uh, is related to the second one, yeah. It's not huge, and we were trying to get it towards the corner of the intersection. Um, and then Carrie, I guess if you could comment on uh, how pickleball would be located in that Crest Street Park. And, and that will be in the presentation that I'm going to do right after Brooks. So you'll see that I had the same question about the, the other sculpture at the trailhead because the re the photos just show it in the in the earth and so I'm wondering if there's a, a large pad or a small pad or just a foundation. No, we would only do a concrete pad for astral projection. Uh, the artist has requested um, for the weathered one near the trail that um, she it, the other ones that she has installed on the west side of the state. Um, it, it, there's just a hole, she says it's like three feet deep, and it, it just drives it into the ground, and that, that's held it up um, on the beaches of Lake Michigan um, and parks around that area. And so she just would prefer not to have a copy of that one. Mm -hmm. It goes with the earth tone of the More natural, yep. Susan? Um, on this one, the meditation pool, it's really kind of cool. Um, are you talking like right close to Lincoln or are you going to push it back into the trees there on the trail? Because Lincoln is not a quiet meditative place. <laughs> right. Um, and the board, the board and the artist likes how it would be kind of closer to the trail and closer to the trees. I think they wanted this like an indication of like, hey, you know, here's like a more quiet, serene, um, picturesque path, uh, but they did want it visible from the street. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, good, thank uh, you. So the artist said that, the artist agreed with what the public arts board wanted, is that you know, something like near, near trail, they thought would be cool. And uh, I can pull up the location again, I think. It almost serves as a trailhead in a way. In some it would be yeah. a little bit further back here. That's how it went. Yep. Okay. That looks great. Thank you. Any other comments? 
I just I, I do want to go back to astral projection at Crestview. Um, I, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't want to question the placement by the, the Public Arts Board because I think they know that, you know, it's, it's their piece and they vetted it. But in terms of looking at the plan, Carrie, I just, I wanted to understand, did they, did they see or, or, or know or look at the potential there for pickleball? I'm just thinking about, and I don't know, I'm not a pickleball player, distraction, it seems like there'd be a lot going on in that area. Um, and not that a, a static sculpture can distract anything, but I'm just thinking of all of the uh, visual things there. And now with potentially pickleball there, would they still think that that's a good location? I don't know. So I'm just wondering what yeah, they're... Yeah, I, I know, and it's, it's um, interesting that they're both on the agenda tonight. Yeah. And Crestview is a potential location for pickleball, not decided yet. Um, now that Brooks and I have um, spoken about this, though, and, and I'm sure he would make the, the public arts board aware that pickleball could be there. Brooks, do you anticipate any issues with pickleball um, being nearby the artwork, you know, kind of encroaching up closer to Southfield? Mm -hmm. So we're, we're currently looking, as you know, uh, west of the existing tennis courts at Crestview. Um, to add pickleball, and on the rendering that I will be sharing this evening, you'll you'll see that um, it doesn't extend all the way. There, there's probably a good 15 feet between the, you know, and, and we didn't lay any of this out yet either, exact locations, but um, it appears to be enough room at this point in time. Well, another possibility is that uh, if you feel comfortable moving forward with Helen Gerzo's weather, you could motion to recommend that and then make a second motion to postpone astral projection and move it to after the wall, uh, where maybe you review the location of the court. Um, if that's, and that's if you're not comfortable moving forward with the location at this time and still talking about court locations. I, yeah. Would it be helpful if I share the, the rendering for Crestview in front of, um, you know, kind of yeah. skip ahead? I yeah, yeah, yeah it would be. That. Yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah. Because I think they're going to feel like it's, it might all fit, but the artboard might want it somewhere where it gets more visibility. That's exactly like, it. I, think, I think it's all going to yeah. fit, but that's a pretty sculpture. You want it to. We just to don't want to fit. I think the idea is there's a site, the plane of view that they're probably looking for there. Yeah, and, and they're I not going to get it with those cards right. there if they go there. Yeah. I, I, th I think I would, I, for Brooks, I think the option that you put forth, that's exactly what I was suggesting. There's no urgency here, right? I mean, I, in, to install, I think the full context of understanding the potential use there would ma help make us make a better decision. And to your point, Susan, I think possibly bringing it back to them if, in fact, um, you know, it's our decision on pickleball. It's not, you know, and they need to understand that we want to make that decision with understanding the context of that whole environment. So, sure. but not at the, how about, yeah. How about, uh, let's see, I have public arts for next Wednesday, and I can bring to them the pickleball discussion and say, hey, this is the context of this potential port addition and things going on. You just don't think the correct part is the location. I can do that. Would we need and, a, a motion. It looks like Lauren. Are you, would we need a motion to that effect to pull it out of? Uh, okay. Well, it's two separate motions, right? In the packet, we are approving one and approving the other. Correct. Correct. Okay. Uh, two separate motions. So, if you wanted to move forward with whether we have a motion to recommend approval to the commission and then one mm -hmm. with uh, consideration of the wall location, do that. Any. Other comment? What's the desire of the board? There's any other feelings or comments? Or motion? Carrie, can we show us? I don't see that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. I'm sorry, Carrie. Thank you. Would you like me to go ahead with that? Yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. Sorry about that. Thank you, Ross. Part of the information is missing from the agenda, so I'm doing the rest of it right now. So. Okay. So sneak peek at my presentation for pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, this option is under 
consideration this evening, and um, as you can see, we're looking at about to hear. So, um, you know, there's there's quite a bit of spacing, at least probably 30 feet or so um, to the to the where the sculpture would be. Now on your next agenda item, is it is it like the beginning of the review? I don't know how far along uh, the park rec board is in terms of recommending it. Is it Cressy Park or something else? Yes. So we've narrowed um, we've narrowed five, um, from five potential locations to three, and Crestview is one of the locations. So we plan to make our recommendation for a final location at the next Parks and Recreation Board meeting oh, in December. December 7th. Yeah. Oh, got it. I thought it was new information. Okay. okay. No, it's the same. How about we postpone astral projection as a public art sport review the pickleball plans because you know maybe the fencing and courts change things and then kind of have a conditional uh, let's see what the Parks and Rec Board votes on Pickleball before moving forward with Crestview. First, I think that would be the best um, line yeah. of action. I, I would agree, Brooks. I, I think, agree. Right. We're looking to make a decision at the December board meeting, right? So it would essentially just be uh, delaying this a month, right? A couple, and, yeah, couple so weeks. It the summer of the sidewalk program, right? Right. So, right. So they're right. Okay. So, go ahead, John. I other have, comments before? I have a question is off. It's, off, it's related to. It's off this exact subject, but it's anyway. Maybe I can just ask the question. Is is it related to the? Uh, is no. it related to the agenda no. item? Okay. Well then. I have a question for you. Not associated with this item. Not associated with this item. Um, then I would, I would wait to have sure. to. Okay, so, so then the motion in front of us now is to back up and consider the uh, the weathered at the location as proposed. And the motion before us there is. I'll go back to the document there. I have it in front of me if you want. <laughs> Thanks, Elaine. Yeah. Um, move to recommend approval of the application for the sculpture on loan titled Weathered by Helen Hirta to be located at the intersection of Fairway Trail and West Lincoln Street. Would anyone like to move the, that motion? I will, I will move to recommend that approval of the application for the sculpture on loan titled Weathered by Helen Hirta to be located at the intersection of Fairway Trail and West Lincoln Street. Second? Second. Great. Roll call. Heather Carmona? Yes. Susan Collins? Yes. Pam Graham? Yes. Ross Kaplan? Yes. Ellie Noble? Yes. John Rushi? Yes. Ann Lutz? Yes. Now for the second piece, do we have to make a motion to table that or is that done by staff based on your rec or what our discussion here? I believe it's a motion to postpone. To postpone. Okay. Yeah. So it's a motion to postpone, but we don't uh, vote on that then, correct? We would vote on it. We postponing. would. Yeah. Okay. So postpone. next is we are moving to postpone the placement or approval of astral projection until further review by the public arts board for until until they review the pickleball plans, correct? Okay. Yeah. All right. Move to coordinate. Coordinate. So coordinate. Coordinate. That's a good coordination with the Public Arts Board. Okay. Yeah. All right. We have a willing member to move that motion. I will move yeah. that we postpone consideration of astral projection until there is coordination with the uh, Public Arts Board in the pickleball situation. Second. Great. Roll call. Okay. Other Carmona? Yes. Susan Collins? Yes. Ann Graham? Yes. Ross Kaplan? Yes. Ellie Noble? Yes. John Rushi? Yes. Ann Lift? Yes. 
I, I just realized we did not put forth any comment for the public here on those items before our vote. If we needed to do that, I believe. On the first item, probably, since we moved it. Correct, Lauren? Yes. Well, comments? Yes. Yes. All right, so backtracking a little bit. <laughs> any any <laughs> comments from members of the public related to the request for the weathered and the placement of that art installation? Okay, seeing none, our action carries forward. <laughs> Sorry, folks. All right, great. Uh, the next item for communication. Can yes. I just ask one question before we move on? Um, I don't know if it's a point of, out of order, but I, I suppose. Since he's here. You're here. Yeah. Sure, yeah. why not? That's my point. He's here. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I just wondered, Brooks, the, um, the artwork that was placed on Booth Trail, remember we had this vandalism thing? I guess it was last summer. And I was just wondering if there's an update on that. And if so, did we learn anything from it one way or the other? Just an update on it. They've been removed. Yeah, police, co police coordinated with the city on that and the artists and are following up on that. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate, however, the artist you know, says, well, you know, uh, the risk is worth the reward um, for that installation. And so uh, I, I believe charges were filed and police are looking into it. I see. Okay, thank you. Yep. To, the, to the, that comment, I did notice on the trail this weekend that it appeared that, that it was probably the artist and I was not at a point where I could approach or was driving. It looked like th they were removing a few of the pieces as well. Are you aware that three of them, it looked like two or three were already in the trunk of a, of a van. So, okay. Yep. Is that? Yep. Okay. Was that yeah, because more, the duration? Is the duration of those pieces complete, or is that because of the potential risk or, uh, or winter? Or, yeah. No, uh, Lori Tennant's installation along the Rouge Trails was for one year. Oh, it was one and, year. Uh, okay. Yeah, it was a one year term, so she so. installed it last October. And, uh, yep. So. so they're all gone, they're all been removed anyway. Yeah. All right. Okay, we will move then into a, a full. Presentation of, of Pick a Ball, Carrie. Thank you. Thank you, Brooks. Thank you, Brooks. Okay. Yes. Okay, so we're ready to move into Pick a Ball. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. We can, we can. Okay. All right. So yes, we're excited tonight to talk about pickleball 2.0. Uh, you got your your sneak peek of the test view, but um, that's okay. So so this presentation, we're going to do a quick recap of where we started, um, an update of where we are now, and how we've um, uh, reduced the locations from five potential uh, locations to three. And what those, some of those locations, what all three locations look like. Um, and then we'd like to receive input from the board tonight and also the public. And then we'll be going over next steps as well. So I'd like to try to keep questions to the end of the presentation. All right. And so starting with where we've been so far. Um, okay. Um, so in May of 2021, at the first recreation board meeting, uh, staff presented five potential locations for pickleball. Those locations included Crestview Park, Kenning Park, Poppleton Park, St. James Park, and West Lincoln Well. 
Um, we also had the survey put out on Engage. It was one of our first projects on Engage Birmingham, which was very exciting. And um, so the, the survey included two questions, pretty much. Um, uh, first, uh, rank these five locations. We included the map um, in, uh, in order of preference, with one being your top choice. So um, you can see the five locations, there's uh, question number one. The second question was, um, tell us why you picked your top location. So the results of the first question, um, we had Kenny Park coming in as the number one picked uh, top pickleball location. Second to that was St. James, Poppleton Park came in at three, West Lincoln Well site was at uh, number four, and then Crestview was number five. Um, the great thing about Engage Birmingham is the reports that you can run from it as an admin, and um, we were able to uh, run um, a, like a, a text analysis from question number two, tell us why, for your top choice. So we were um, able to figure out that the most um, the most common answer to question number one of why did you pick this park is because it's near to me, to, to where I live. And they obviously were pickleball players and wanted to enjoy the sport close to them. Um, secondly, um, the participants felt that it should be a central location. This was common for um, Poppleton Park and St. James and sometimes Crestview. Um, then the common theme that we found when people picked Kenning Park for their number one choice was that it's in a location where there's other sports nearby, the racket club, the ice arena um, is nearby, it's also in an industrial area, so um, it didn't have a whole lot of impact on the neighborhood. Um, another important um, theme was that there should be enough available space and that um, there should be parking. So um, over the past few months, after the survey uh, and working, staff has been working through the Capital Project Subcommittee, um, keeping all of the considerations in mind that you see on the slide here, um, and we engage the services of Foresight Design to perform site evaluations. Now Foresight Design is a local architect um, that specializes in athletic fields and recreational facilities. So um, we engage their services to perform site evaluations. Um, the, the, the considerations are that the, the committee um, took into account with all of what you're going to see as our recommendation this evening uh, is, of course, the parking, that um, pickleball is a very social sport, and um, we wanted to be able to offer ladder leagues or at least be able to host ladder leagues at the location. Um, ADA is always a consideration. We wanted to provide site furnishings, possibly, again, because of the social aspect of the sport. And um, the, the sound that the pickleball um, can comes, comes along with and the proximity to um, nearby residents that live uh, where we're looking at. Um, we also wanted to consider other tennis players and the impact of tennis and screening that might be necessary depending on where the pickleball courts go and other current park activities. Um, and we, we did take a look at whether we should definitely build new pickleball courts or if it would be possible to convert existing tennis courts into pickleball. Um, all in keeping in mind public input that we've received. So we set some goals that we wanted to keep at least, uh, that we wanted to provide at least six to eight pickleball courts. We need parking and we would, we hope to maintain existing fields and courts and playgrounds. So like I mentioned, five locations to three. Crestview Park is one of the top three, Kenning Park and St. James. So let's dig in here. So Crestview, we're looking at the area to the west of the existing tennis courts and you see Southfield Road in that picture and this is just a different view. And um, this is uh, kind of an overlay of what Foresight Design 
and recommended as the potential location for pickleball. This is a different view. It's just a, a rendering of what that would look like, but I, I do like this view because you can see what we have currently there. So with Crestview, <clears throat> there is enough park space to accommodate six to eight pickleball courts. There is on-street parking available that would accommodate enough parking for six to eight pickleball courts. There's definitely room to the north for site amenities, should we include, but um, there is some nice shade trees there to the north. And um, there's barriers between the residents. So you've got West South Lawn Boulevard to the south and Shipman Boulevard. So it doesn't impact a lot of residents uh, with the sound that pickleball can come along with. But um, other night items that we should note here, it does include the elimination of one tennis court from our park inventory. Um, they're they're ten traffic on Southfield, right? So noise and screening um, needs to be um, taken into account when we're if we choose to build here. Um, artwork on the corner, I added that in after Brooks wanted to come onto the agenda. Um, just this past week. So um, we have that out there right now. And um, we could provide a portable restroom at this location. These tennis courts do need work. And we uh, would have to, if, if we choose to move forward with Crestview as of the location for pickleball, it would involve a demolition of the existing tennis courts and then building back with one new tennis court and the six to eight pickleball courts as shown here. The next location, Kenny Park. Um, and this, this corner here at Lincoln and Eaton is actually part of Kenny Park. A lot of people were not aware that it was, and, and it is, and um, it, it was our number one um, location from the original survey. So this is a great spot to accommodate eight courts. Here's the rendering that Foresight provided here. And so for Kenning, like I mentioned, six to eight pickleball courts could go here. There is a city parking lot across the street. There would be room for site amenities, especially you know if we are only doing six courts. You have that area to the very east that could be the area which uh, you have seating or um, you know room for spectators or tables. Um, but even if you wanted to keep the eight, I think there would be enough room to squeeze in some area for um, the amenities to the east of where they're situated. Um, there is no conflict with existing park fields, playgrounds, or courts. It's not connected with the rest of the park. So very minimal residential proximity as well. Um, the parking lot, you do have to walk to a little bit, but it's not too bad. But we would plan on um, installing a crosswalk and signage for parking here. It can be a very busy area and there is traffic, it, it, it can be loud. So we would want to consider some screening here too. And at this location, there is artwork on this corner. Um, you can see it right here, actually. Um, and then restrooms are available at the ice right now for this location. So lastly, St. James Park, that's a uh, shot of the existing courts. And so we looked, we looked at this location here next to, I guess it would be to the west again of the tennis courts. And also we, we took a look at the area south of the tennis courts as well. And our um, potential location for pickleball is shown in this area with eight courts to the south of the existing tennis courts. There's a, a rendering here. Um, and that, that great square is where we could put a plaza for site amenities, um, you know, gathering area for pickleball players. So um, 
um, there is enough of park space available for six to eight courts. There's a city parking lot. Um, there's also on-street parking that could be available on, along Grant Street and room for site amenities. Um, little impact for the residents. And um, the, although it does include the elimination of one tennis court from our park inventory. It's a very active park. We have baseball, tennis, a playground. The Y does reserve it in the summer months for day camp um, and also soccer sometimes. It's also the, the potential site for future splash pad. Uh, we normally do put out a portable restroom. And lastly, just to note, um, the tennis courts here also are in need of some work. And so it would include uh, a demolition of the existing courts and then building back with inclusion of pickleball at the site. We decided to eliminate Poppleton Park um, because Really, although it's a large park, uh, we looked at this location right next to the existing tennis courts, and it's just too close to the neighbors. Um, we looked at the conversion of the existing courts um, to pickleball, which we could accommodate six, but um, you know we just. Uh, decided that it's just not an option, that losing two tennis courts out of our park inventory is not acceptable. It's um, The other option is right next to the courts, which that's really not a good spot either. There could be parking conflicts with the baseball um, activity that goes on. There's only 14 spots here, and um, it's we eliminate this as an option based on that. We also eliminated West Lincoln Wall Park. Again, just not a good spot to build new and um, too close to those residents. We looked at that spot. We could fit five, five there, but um, it's just too close to the neighbors and not enough parking. So we eliminated this as an option as well. Uh, and this, I, I just wanted to share with you for information. We do have um, 16 tennis courts in our park inventory located at seven locations. Um, and this is a snapshot of from our recreation uh, software program where uh, we take reservations, of course. In, in 2021, we had 3,558 tennis court reservations. Um, so if you take a closer look at where most of those reservations are occurring, and we take a look at our three um, top, well, first of all, Kenning Park would not be affected at all because those courts would remain. Crestview Park uh, had 491 reservations this year, but if you look at East versus West, um, the West tennis court was one of the lower reserve numbers. Um, and then I'll also just point out at St. James Park, a lot of reservations, both east and west, uh, were were reserved. So we can see that. And then also to note, this does not include tennis activity that people don't, don't make reservations for. So here's our three options, just uh, to wrap up. Um, that are, we plan to um, post to engage in Birmingham. We'd like to have that survey open starting next week and run through the end of the month. Um, and it will be, you know, just tell us what your favorite location is out of these three options. There won't be a ranking, just um, pick your favorite pickleball location. Uh, we'd like to hear from you tonight, though, the board and the public that's here to um, give us their thoughts on these three locations and then we we would take all of this info and meet with the capital projects subcommittee again and be ready to make a recommendation to the parks and recreation board at the next meeting in december 
So with that, I'll open it up for input, questions, comments. Great. Thank you, Carrie. That was a great presentation. Thank you. Uh, very thorough. Okay. Any comments from members of the board or questions for Carrie Ross? Sure. I just wondering overall, I know it's going to impress you especially, but is there proposed like fencing around the fence court? You know, probably higher fencing, I'm assuming, and then for the pickleball, would there be lower fencing around it? Around the perimeter at least? Um, you know, I think the perimeter is the higher fencing, and then in between the courts, there's like a lower fence. Because okay. Crestview looked like it was very close to the tennis, closer than the other two. Um, but I'm assuming that's all been designed properly. Yeah, um, you know, these are preliminary concepts. Once we start digging in a little bit, you know, once we select a location, the design will be um, a little bit more thorough. But um, I can pull it up. I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, or I, I was having a little bit of trouble hearing you, Ross. So it, do, do we want to look at the Crestview um, schematic? No, I'm good. Are you asking if there's a, a bar some divider or barrier between the cor between the pickleball assuming, and yeah, the tennis court? Well, some delineation it or a physical that barrier? Visually, that it was closer than all right. the other ones, but if it hasn't been laid out. Yeah. He's asking about the physical location of the. If you pull the rest of you up, I sure. Yeah. Yeah, okay, let me do that. Oops. I'm in the slideshow, sorry about that. <laughs> So it would almost be like it, the tennis courts would almost be like boxed in, right. in, in essence, right? Because yeah. you have it going around the it's edge much faster too. Sports than, you know, ball, ball, that is. Mm -hmm. Just for right. And um, you know, I'm sorry. I was having a little bit of trouble hearing you, Ross. Can you repeat that again? To just demark the courts from themselves, among themselves. Okay. Mm -hmm. you? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Not just. A, yeah. Okay. Pam. Mm -hmm. I have a comment and a question. Um, my comment is about using Engage Birmingham, like as a voting or survey tool. I would just advise that I don't think it's a good idea to like think that the number of votes you get on Engage Birmingham is a true you know, reflection of the public, and that it's very useful to get comments on why people like it. But unless, and if you're going to, if your intent is to use it as, I'm going to pick the most popular one, I don't know, then we need to say that, and that's a different kind of get out your vote, then I'm looking for the interested people, people that are interested and have something to say about pickleball, to say something. Um, my, my question is, um, on the schematics for St. James Park, it's not clear to me why one park would be, why one of the courts were to be eliminated. I understand that the courts need to be replaced and you identified the area as something for amenities, but it just looked like there was still space for the same court to be rebuilt if things were just barely rearranged. And so why did you, you know, why was there a decision to eliminate one of the courts, uh, particularly in St. James Park? If you could pull up that picture and if you have any information about that. Like there it is, why I agree. Yeah. Um, and this is this is preliminary. So um, I agree this could be pushed up or maybe relocated. Possibly we do keep both tennis courts um, and try to um, do a central uh, plaza area in between. Um, that 
I guess we um, we we wanted to accommodate an area for state amenities here. At this I guess I just wonder if, if they the had the input that the courts would be replaced because if you know based on your claim that the courts need maintenance and they would be de demolished and replaced um then especially if you don't have to put them in their exact place it just seems like there's clearly room for two tennis courts and eight pickleball courts if that's a community uh wish and if they were only Great. looking this at like this we wanted to hear your comments this evening so thank you okay thanks Any any other members of the board? I do. Cotty or Claire. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I I have a question about Kenning Park, and you mentioned that parking, which I've all along been with you, parking's across the street. And then tonight we talked about which I'm getting, but this is raising a concern for me. Is that there would be a crosswalk? You said for Ken for Kenning Park. Would that go across Lincoln to that parking lot? Yeah, just to help um, people cross in a certain spot to get from the parking lot across the street or across Lincoln. Just a striping of the street. Like how, I, I, I guess I envision how busy are these going to be because that's a really busy road going back and forth. And it's not only busy, we have a lot of kids and obviously there's kids all through Birmingham, but there's uh, baseball, tennis, ice, and that is the first time I've been like, oh, I've loved Kenning Park for this, but that's a little concerning to me. And maybe I'm overthinking how many people are going to be coming through there. No, you've got the swim club in the summer, too. Yeah. Yeah. I think, like, kids on bikes. Kids, kids on bikes come yeah. out pool. Yeah. Is and crosswalk at the stop sign, or is it yeah, where would it be? option of another crosswalk further with the east? At the existing crosswalk is what we're asking. Yeah. It's just going to be a more prominent striping, or is it a new crosswalk? Is it in the same location as the at the corner, where the crosswalk ends and perpendiculates the street? Right. That's what we're asking. I think. Just, yeah. So the question is, will there be an additional crosswalk yeah. from the parking lot? Is yes. That or that's what, that's what we originally had. Um, we had thought that we would, would be necessary with with this. And would it be at the corner? Maybe not. Um, Signage so though guiding people, you know, park here. We don't want to add parking on Lincoln and um, and Eaton. There's, you know, it's, it's pretty big. There's the bike lane area. There's not a lot of room for parking along Eaton. So, kind of guiding people to park in the parking lot at Kenning Park is what is the thought there. Yeah, I that. I never thought about that till today, so I appreciate how you've laid this out, Carrie, because I think that's a really important point, and um, I didn't catch it until you gave your presentation today. So. Okay. Okay. Um, um, yeah. Um, I, I probably would be happy with any of those three. Thank you, Carrie. Um, however, I am bothered by road noise. <laughs> so I am thinking as um, a pickleball player, I would love to have it probably be in a place there's less traffic, which would mean that that would eliminate two out of the three, and that would be St. James Park, probably be quieter. Oh, I see. Any other comments from the board? John? Um, along the, the lines of um, amenities that, that Carrie mentioned, I, I visited the two courts, two pickleball courts in Royal Oak, and the theme of, of pickleball being such a social activity, it's pretty much validated there, where they have, um, well, one of, the, one of the courts has uh, large trees, but they have plenty of uh, park benches and uh, picnic tables. The other court actually has, there are no trees around, so they built a sun shelter, like an awning kind of sun shelter thing, where people, if they're not playing, they're just hanging out there, talking, drinking beverages, eating a sandwich, whatever. So I think it's not really shown on, on these, although there are there's space on most of them. But I think at some point, the idea of earmarking a space for sun shelter and picnic tables and benches would be a good idea. Great. All right, any other comments from members of the board? If not, we will open it up to members of the public that are in the room with us this evening. 
Okay. Introduce yourself or yeah, first yeah. in your name, please, I'm and Stephanie. address. I'm Stephanie Lucetis, also a pickleball player. <laughs> Thanks, Stephanie. And um, my question is, are we planning on having the pickleball limited to certain months of the year, or are these carts going to be set up and left open to play all year round? I don't know the answer to that. Did that Carrie, did you hear that? Open year round. Open your round. Good. Okay. You're brave. <laughs> <laughs> that was a winner. I'll bring my shovel. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your question? No, okay, I, another question. Well, we're still playing outside. Yeah. Out in Auburn Hills, so um, it's much easier to play outside than in. I think. <laughs> yeah. um, my not my question, just my comments, and I'm going to put them in engage anyway. But Carrie, good job. I would have picked the same three for all the reasons that you gave. Um, even though I would like to have them closer to me, I think Kenning Park, in my opinion, I'm not pushing anything, but it's kind of like a no-brainer. It's got parking, it's got noise already, so you don't have to worry about pickleball noise. It's basically a sports area. It's got a restroom at the ice arena. You almost don't have to do anything more you don't have to take any of your inventory out from the tennis courts. You basically got um, at the end of Kenny where you were showing it, you've got a row of those trees, just put a few benches in there. You, It's kind of like, like I said, I'd rather have it closer to me at Crestview or St. James, but to me, I think that's like a perfect location. It is a little busy, but it, I don't think it would make any difference because there's so much going on there anyways. You've got all those sports that everyone already knows that's kind of a sport area. That's just my opinion. But I like the idea you're keeping it open as long as possible. Um. Thank you. Yes. Uh, only a couple people here might know it's Oz and Linda Forrester. Yes, I was going to ask, but I know Connie knows, and but for are, the record. Yeah. We are essentially the people who pushed this thing for the last five yes. or eight uh -huh. years or something. And it's glad to see it's coming along, and and we've scouted all those locations long before this, and and, and we agree, the, the last three you picked are are probably the best, and I don't have a selection right now, but good good job for everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, it's great to hear. Are, are there any comments from anybody joining us via Zoom? I know we have a few members of the public. Any comments? We have hands up, Eric, or anyone? Let's see. Hi, it's Patty Blair. Hi, everybody. Yes, hi, Patty. Thank you all the research. Thank you. I have a question. I'm not a typical player, but I hope I will be. Um, when you talk about screening, what do you mean? You kind of talked about it. Is that green screen, such as arbor lighting type things and plantings or trees, or just screening your own courts? People might want to know that. Sure. I, had, I had another question. It's more interesting than this one. So, oh, I, can I assume or can we assume that uh, everybody needs to be a resident to play and make a reservation as their service is supposed to for tennis? That's it. Okay, um, yes, screening could involve green screening, such as arborvitae or other evergreen type plantings. Um, or it could include, you know, the fence type screening that you see on, on tennis courts or within, through the chain link. So either option we haven't determined yet. Uh, it all depends on the lo location we choose. I do think that the natural screening would provide more of a sound barrier in a location such as Kenning, and I think it would be necessary. Um, as far as reservations, we would we would open it up for all. Although, although um, you know, if we took a look at our, our uh, that snapshot that I shared, we had. There's a handful of non-residents that actually made reservations. Um, and I, I do think residents get priority, is that correct, Kenny? That is correct, and the non-residents are the instructors, but they can speak for that use. Okay. We're, we're public and we're open, and we can't, we can't close our facilities to non-residents. Great, thanks, looks great. Thanks. Thank you, Patty. This, this is Jeff Burns. Um, this has just been a, a very, very stimulating <laughs> conversation and analysis. I think you've done in your, 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 you've done in your,
to say is please listen to what Oz has to say because he is the Paul Guru or something. <laughs> You're very fortunate they have him pushing this thing. Absolutely, Very Jack. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Thank you. We all lead exciting lives here, don't we? <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Okay, great. Oz, you had a comment? Yes. Um, does anyone play pickleball here? Okay. As you know, I it's do. a kind of a. <laughs> okay, Jack, we'll see you. <laughs> As you know, it's a kind of a consensus time when you play. Now, if you go down. Royal Oak, to those courses, I mean courts, we played down there. Everybody just knows at five o'clock you show up. And, this, and there's no other way it succeeds because I personally put pickleball courts in our, ten, in our ice arena a couple years in a row and we had almost no one play because there was never a consensus time to show up. So. If you if you make it reservations, I think you stifle that. But maybe we need some way to to kind of prime this pump and say, here's a time, and, and by a consensus of a pickleball player, here's a good time we can show up. Some people show up in Royal Oak in the midday, you know, retirees and whatever. Other people show up at five o'clock where we've gone. And these are people who work plus. And so if you go there any other time than that, the courts are empty or you're by yourself looking around for someone to play. So, so I don't know how to prime that pump, but I do appreciate all the effort everyone's made to get this to happen. I do have a suggestion that maybe if you are thinking six courts, you could have two as reservation only and four as open something like that. Especially if you're going to do leagues, you probably would be at least four courts, depending on the people, obviously. But I think you're going to find that there will be enough people to fill the courts at certain times. So I have a question for you. Sure. I have a photograph from where I did my tour of the Royal Oak Courts. And they have a sign on the screen, and it says uh, schedule. June through October, Ladder League, Tuesday, 9 to noon, Wednesday, 5.30 to dark. Mm -hmm. So is that kind of what you're saying? If you want to yeah. play in this, you just show up at this yes, time? Yes, but, but because they have so many courts, that one of them, only part of it is ladder and the other is open. But yes, I that's see. a general idea. I see. But that's kind of a consensus of the people who play. You know, sure. To say sure. who can show up. And, and people regularly go to next and play there, mm -hmm. and they might be interested then in shifting their time over to a new court. Mm -hmm. And so they would bring a, a group and a kind of a consensus time. Mm -hmm. And that can, that has to develop on its own. I think. Sure, yeah. Great, good, good discussion. Any, any other comments from anyone else regarding this? We're not really taking action, we're just sort of waiting, right? right? Yeah, yeah, Pam? Terry, I was wondering if you have any information, any preliminary information on construction costs or any issues like regarding drainage or remediation that might make one of the sites much more expensive than another site, um, if we could use that information in, um, when making a final recommendation. Or is it just kind of the same cost? I have a general idea based on um, discussions with a consultant from Foresight that um, we should plan on um, right about 70 to 80,000 um, per, like for tennis. So um, actually it would be closer to like 150 to 180 for new build for a six to eight pickleball courts. And, and no information um, that, that some of the sites would. Cost, like when I mentioned, you know, we'd want to redo trust view uh, tennis scores. So the demo costs are not included in that. And I, I thought from previous discussions, like that there were some drainage issues in St. James Park in particular. 
And if remediation of that, you know, on a larger scale to accommodate six or eight tennis courts was was going to add, you know, a, a lot of cost or make the project less viable. Yes, and we we um, we don't have a good estimate at this time of what those costs could be for for at St. James. There are some drainage issues, um, but it could be it could be eliminated just you know by um, the addition of some incorporating some drain tile and um, uh, you know site changes as you build. So, but I'm, I'm, I don't have those costs at this time. Okay. Great. Uh, hey, uh, Gary, is there a, an actual layout of six or eight uh, pickleball courts on a surface with, so that we can look at? Because as you know, the pickleball players will know, we need space between those courts because we play outside the lines. <laughs> and so, so you need space to play there, and you can't be, you know, putting the courts together because that simply doesn't work. You need, and I, you, you've seen the layout I made years ago, and whatever, and, and it, it allows enough space to play on both courts, and both, and, and at all times, both players are coming into this zone between, so, I, you know, I you know caution not to jam them too tight because they really want to be working. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, our um, our consultant is familiar with the standards for pickleball uh, design, and um, the um, there's like a. U.S. I forget the name of it, but there's there's recommendations on spacing requirements for pickleball courts and the layouts okay. and such. So um, that's what I can offer right now. <laughs> and as we design them and really get into the nitty gritty after we pick a location, then um, you know we'll make sure to to account for all of that. Thank you. All right. All right, well, we're definitely staying true to our word with Jack on having a robust conversation here. So <laughs> <laughs> we can go all night on this. All right, are we ready to move on? It's, okay, mm -hmm. great. Thank you, everyone, and thank you for the members of the public for your, your comments as well. <clears throat> okay, the next item of communication and discussion on the agenda is the memo dated November 1st regarding a conflict of interest um, on, on this board. Lauren, you were going to introduce this? Yes, hi, good evening everyone. Uh, Lauren Wood, um, in Zoom land, so um, <laughs> sorry I couldn't be there this evening, but um, so this item in particular was a, a Miller Pomona uh, approached the city uh, raising the question uh, with regard to uh, getting an opinion from our city attorney. Uh, this November 1st, 20, 2021, uh, memorandum is from Mary Pichard, our city attorney, and um, Heather had requested uh, an opinion um, from us, and so we, we contacted Mary. Uh, Heather's husband is employed by Roper School, and um, Adams Park plan, as you know, has uh, been reactivated, um, and um, it's going to be moving quickly uh, with Michael J. Newell and Associates. And so, as you read the, the memorandum, um, so therefore, um, it has been determined that a conflict um, can be perceived or in, in fact uh, does exist. Um, so with that, um, each time the subject matter of Adams Park comes up, um, whether it's conversation, um, action item, discussion, or any consideration, um, Heather should disclose that she has a conflict and then recuse yourself from that discussion um, and participating in anything with regard to that, Adams Park. And actually, um, she would physically leave, leave the room um, during that discussion period and then would return 
when such item is uh, concluded. So, um, Heather, did you want to touch base on anything? No, I think that says it. Um, you know, I it occurred to me when we were looking at engaged comments that um, potentially the perception and the fact that he is employed uh, originally started with my daughter is a is goes to the school, which I did not think would be a conflict. But as the deliberations occurred about the amenities and in that, and I felt that potentially it could be a conflict. And, and in fact, I think it is. So I think you've stated it clearly. I guess the one question I did have, Lauren, and this is really with Susan and John, is this also would include any um, any participation in the capital improvement subcommittee, correct? So not just matters for voting at the board level, but any deliberation in terms of being part of those discussions in the subcommittee. Is that correct? It's not stated here, but I just want to understand if that's the case. Um, yes. Um, it would, in fact, apply to anything because you're within the acting as a, a member of a part okay. of the board, a particular chair. Okay. Um, and so even upcoming the next agenda item, if John does go over that line by line, um, Adams Park is on there. And so you yeah. would have to make that statement and leave the room if, if that item is going to be discussed or, or if it's just going to be a sort of receiving file um, as, a, as a communication. So, but okay. we will we'll guide you through this uh, as well, Heather. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay, any comments or discussion from members of the board? Thank Pam. You. <laughs> yeah, I just have a comment that um, I think that it's important that Roper administration or some other Roper parents be involved um, in this park, considering that it's, you know, at the, at adjacent to their school. And I just... Um, like that Heather, I knew that Heather would represent or be in contact with that administration. So I hope that the schedule of meetings and the urgency and the schedule at which the, the park will be addressed, you know, will be communicated to them. It'd be great to see um, another parent or, um, or students or administration from the school involved in the public discussion about those improvements. Yeah, Heather, can I <coughs> Sure. I don't think I can, right? <laughs> That's my question. <laughs> yeah, so, Pam, on that note, we've already been in place since 
send out the invite and I'll be notified of the, the date. So um, we just want to make sure it's ready to go when we do have a right. uh, party. So um, I know Susan's daughter skated there this Tuesday, I, this morning, today. Well, she didn't uh, skate because she has stitches in yeah. her leg, but she will be skating there soon. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're going well. We're sort of all just getting, you know, set, set in and it's great. Just getting through some things. But it's great. <coughs> Will the event be a public event? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. So when we have a date, that would be something that would be put out publicly. Correct. Okay. Yes. Great. So okay. Connie, I, I just have a question for Connie. Right. So, um, like on the website, it says there's open skate on Sunday and things like that. Are those all a go? Yep. Yep. Everything's a go. Oh. Everything's a go. With rental skates. And yep. Yep. Because we we'll be there on Sunday. Just, uh, <laughs> You know, our credit card machine's not working, just things like that. So we're, we're you know, we're, we're making it happen. We're letting people skate. Do we have credit card machines yep, before? Yep. Oh, yep. I didn't know you had those. Okay. So, you got yeah. a cheese so stick? we have someone taking money from the booth and doing the skate rental and just trying to get our staff on board. Great, great. What's Live Barn? Uh, Live Barn is actually, um, will be on that large big screen television that we have in the lobby. And what it is, it allows for the parent to um, log, either watch the child from the lobby instead of going out in the arena, or if they have multiple children in the different facilities on their phone, they can go on to Live Barn and they can watch their child maybe skating at Farmington Hills while their son or daughter is skating at Birmingham. So it's a, a program that allows for the parents or you know anyone to watch multiple children in multiple areas. So there's like. So How many cameras are, are there? Are well, that, that's to come. We just got the agreement signed, so oh. they're, they're going to be coming to our facility and setting that all up. So they'll be they'll be mics, it'll be camera. Um, it's quite unique, actually. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of the rigs have it, so we're we're stepping on. So yeah. it's mm -hmm. cool. Indeed. How is that funded? Pardon? How is that funded? Like if the people's parents subscribe, so that pays for. Is it, the, yeah, correct. It's a. Um, it's an app they pay for. We get part of that uh, commission. Mm -hmm. so. hmm. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, the next um, item on our agenda is the golf course updates. So that's just um, basically for our numbers. Uh, numbers. Go Sorry, Lauren. Yeah, well, uh, can I take that? Yes. Okay, so golf course, um, the, the report from finance looks great. You could look at last year, prior year combined versus this year, it was doing really well. Um, I just wanted to point out um, on the Jackson report, the golf report, November 5, 2021. Um, I think we're winding down. Um, Jackie and I have been in touch <laughs> regularly. Um, she thinks maybe after this weekend, the weather's going to really change. Um, for the worst, of course, and she might be closing soon, possibly a week left. So as soon as we know, we'll, we'll update the board. Um, and it'll, of course, be on the website. Um, so, so we are winding down. Um, however, this uh, weekend, Saturday and Sunday, she has a turkey shoot that she has every year. It's usually only one day, but because it's so popular, back by popular demand, she has 68 to 72 players expected, so she spread it over two days. Um, she makes a full turkey dinner. Um, they golf, and it's uh, for a local charity, for which um, we've been coordinating that, and she's been the lead on that, of course, um, for several years now. So it's a really great event. Um, she doesn't even need to promote it. People just have been involved with it and signed up for it. So it's... Um, back by popular demand every year. So um, so that's exciting. And I just wanted to bring up the date that we should be closing pretty soon. The numbers look really good. This year actually if you notice the rounds um, over sixty two thousand and hopefully we, we get the, a little bit higher the next week or so. But uh, the last two years have been exceptional years. Um, Despite everything uh, going on, people are enjoying outside and getting their clubs out and new, new, new players and the leagues have been great and um, it's been going really well. So um, I think uh, the rest of the report sort of speaks for itself and um, mm -hmm. happy to answer any questions if you have any or hear any good comments. Ross. Maybe in the next few months once it closes, just to get an update on uh, 
you know, the general fund that supports the, the build we did, whatever, 10 years ago or plus, and where we're at with that as an update? Ross, that's the pay can I ask, um, you're talking about us paying back? Uh, the payback. The well, yeah, the payback. Yeah, we pay back the, um, I guess, the loan that we built Lincoln. And right. uh, I know we had an update quite a while ago. Yeah, I think yeah, Dominic was asked, or, or, yeah, asking about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's called out in, this, uh, in the finance report. Um, they draw every every month is ten thousand three hundred thirty three dollars to pay that back. Which line? Um, what's it called? What's the line? Continue, I know. Um, depending on the position of the golf course, it's going to be. I think it's just at the hundred thousand um, annually right now. So, but I'll get an update from finance and let us know. I'll let everyone know for December's meeting. Yeah, no, I, I realize the general fund that's stated here. Just we're at one point two million dollar per payback. What's the draw down? Now. What's the draw? Yeah. What the draw is. Yeah. What's left? Right. I'll get that. I have to get that from finance. Okay. The latest on that, and, I, and I'll have it on the one on the December meeting. Right. Thank you. All right. Does that answer your question, Ross? Yes. Okay. Great. <laughs> and any um, any other comments? Great. I think the next item then is um, information regarding funding that has been made available for parks. And thank you for sharing that. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions, it's information. I did have a question. Does anybody else have a question regarding this? I have to say, this is um, <laughs> by my old house. And this has actually been closed for two and a half years, not just a year. And it's the most beautiful bike pack I've ever been on. And it would be so nice to see it fixed. But <laughs> um, and they're, they're expecting this to cost like a million dollars to fix. That's not in Birmingham, though. No, it's Trap City. Okay. <laughs> it's Petoskey, I'm sorry. But, oh, my God. It was so gorgeous. I've never seen that picture. They don't let us down there anymore. I, I, I did have a question. I know it's for But, you know, it's interesting whenever – you know, there's announcements made of funding, right? That every right. sudden people think like, oh, it's available right now. We can go get it. Um, is there any, do you, are you aware, Lauren, at all, that the, the, the thing that the article did state in particular, it was on page three or the second to last, no, I don't, no, I'm losing my pages here. It said that the Senate bill sponsored by Michael McDonald would devote 150 million for grants to help local, par local parks make upgrades. Is that something, it often depends on sometimes the location and the criteria for that. Are the, is that $150 million, a competitive grant that Birmingham could be in, could buy for? Because it's a very broad statement, right? So I don't know. I'm just asking whether or not there's any more information or aware that the takeaway is, is there money here that we could potentially get? Bill, Heather will check on that. Um, I don't have any latest information other than um, this uh, article. Okay. Um, and reading a lot, of, or there's some other items that we had that um, we researched a little bit. Um, it's for facilities that are de in a blight condition or communities that um, that just need help. So mm -hmm. the grants might be geared toward that mm -hmm. a little bit more than for new construction. Um, but we'll, we'll research it and we can give an update. Understood. That'd be great. Yep. Just because I think we want to know any opportunity that's available right. for yeah. us, right? Yeah. I just think particularly for the trails. I mean, because didn't we sure. want to try and get those trails to go through and maybe add to them? Yeah. And that's maybe kind some of a con connectivity or some other. Right. When I look at this, like everyone in this area knows about this issue. Right. You know, it's hard to point to anything in Birmingham. Right. That, yeah. you know. <clears throat> okay. All right, very good. Um, the next item on the agenda is any items of unfinished business? And the next item then, any items of new business that anyone would like to bring up for discussion or? Well, yeah. Pam? I, I don't know if it's new or unfinished or whatever, but we haven't had an agenda item regarding the unanimous, unanimous approval of the city commission to move forward on Adams Park last night. And so that was great. And um, if there's any information, I know that um, uh, 
members of the community will be really interested. You know, they knew to make their comments on Engage Birmingham and that Michael Dool will work with those comments, but um, there was some promises or discussions like that they would be involved. There would be an outlet for um, uh, residents to be involved in the selection of the playground equipment. And so I was just looking for any information about when that would happen so I could speak with neighbors about that in my just role as, you know, neighbor. <laughs> Okay, noted. Okay, any other, well, new business, uh, members of the public don't, yes, any members of the public have new business? I think we already did that. I'm looking again at the Zoom. Uh, okay, the next item is open to the public for items that are not on the agenda. Is there anyone well, would like to speak to items not on the agenda? Okay, seeing none, then we will adjourn. Our next public regular meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, December 7th. We'll see everyone back here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.